Hey, this is Notzer, and this is the quintessential ranked game. This is what is keeping you up at night. This is what is causing your hair to go gray. You're probably pulling it out as I speak about some of the stress-filled ranked games that you've experienced. I know how you feel. Everyone in this game knows how you feel. Both sides will not feel like this game had any real value other than to cause stress. And I'm going to explain it, and hopefully I'll help anyone who feels like I get in the exact same situation and I don't know what to do. And if you're one of those people, this is a good resource to try and learn from. Now, this is my attempt to try and help players who definitely need it, but also to reassure you that I'm one of those players too. So here are the matchups. We've got a Montana, Yamato, two Zows, a Gearing, a Z52, and a Kaba on my team. The enemy team is a Grosakuo first, Yamato, two Zows, two Gearings, and a Z52. So very similar overall makeup of either side. Clearly the Zows would like to set fires, clearly the battleships would like to do damage, and clearly the brawling DDs would like to brawl with other DDs. I was the easternmost battleship, so I started initially to head towards B point, and that island that's just uh, to the east of B, that is a great long-range support fire position, and usually it's either a long-range cruiser or, or a long-range battleship. Is there any other type of battleship, not sir? Well, maybe Germans, but I just tease, I tease. And, and I was like, I, would, I don't really want to have two great big battleships on the same exact flank. I just, I feel really uncomfortable with that idea because I can't provide fire support or I can't get an angle of fire that punishes someone who has set up a defensive position against one of the battleships. Case in point, Sleeping Giant, what do you think they always love to do? Enemy, Worcesters, Des Moines, camping radar ships, they love to set up on the island chain that is between the B and C point. They love to fire on a battleship or a cruiser or even a DD and have absolutely no answer to it whatsoever. So I personally prefer to have a different flank from at least one battleship. So I can guarantee that I'll get a shot on it. Conveniently, the friendly Z-52 recognized that the window was open his radio location was suggesting that there was an enemy DD that was headed to the east side of A, and he absolutely diagnosed it. Unfortunately, he couldn't stop the gearing. He didn't get there in time. I tried to get a little bit of chip damage on it, and I... Oh, man. Okay, so first big moment of the game just occurred. Friendly Kaba just detonated from a Zao. We don't have the friendly Kabarovsk anymore who was on the eastern flank. He's gone. Never to return. And it was definitely fun and engaging. So in that moment, everyone on my team just lost a little bit of wind in their sails. While the enemy is, you know, exultant. Oh, we got an easy free kill on a Kaba. Usually takes forever, right? And you just feel dejected. You feel like, oh, oh, why didn't he run demolition signal flag? Doesn't he know it's always going to happen, right? Everyone has that thought. But you don't know that that's always going to happen. And you don't know how many flags they might have. Well, if they were really into it, they would spend the money and buy them from the storefront, right? It was just a lucky salvo, okay? The guy was basically full of life and he got detonated. That's the way the game works. Is it unfortunate? Is it without chance of coming back? No. So don't treat it like the end of everything. It is ranked, and you're going to come in contact with many different people who have many different ideas of how to play the game. And you know what? If you want to maintain some level of sanity, I would suggest you don't take it too seriously. It's different for clan in my opinion, because you have a an expectation that everyone's working together towards a common goal. In ranked, it's really about yourself. And that's unfortunate that that's the direction that ranked has gone, but that is really the first thing you need to understand. 
So, yes, it sucks. I feel like I don't have a chance to win. That's my immediate reactions to it. But I'm trying to fight that urge. I'm trying to do everything I can to give us a chance. And one of the first things that I think is giving us a chance is to get damage on a target. And this Gorosuku at first, he's taken a lot of significant fire damage, and I'm trying to make sure I have angle on him. I also want to have angle on the other side of the map because they need fire support too. But I just have to make sure that we can get one enemy ship down. Now, it's a battleship. It's not as valuable as a DD, let's be honest. But it's still something. It's still on a flank that we could take advantage of. If we get rid of him, that flank should be easier for us to win. You'll notice that the friendly Z-52 has bypassed pretty much everyone on the enemy team and is headed towards their base, the C-Point, because the West is falling. There are not enough players on the Western side. We just lost our gearing, we just lost our Zal, and the Gorosukua first is still alive. Really? You're still alive? We've put so much effort into killing him, he's still alive in some stupid smoke cloud, but eventually the friendly Zao takes him out and he burns down. Now, I mean, we're down two ships, two significantly important ships, DDs, but the game's not over yet. The enemy hasn't reached a thousand points. So, Z-52 capturing the enemy base. There are two enemy ships on that flank, so they're probably going to retreat back to maybe potentially stop it. I'm headed towards the worst thing ever. I'm headed towards a flank of four enemy ships, and I don't want to be here. And I probably recognize far too late that this is a really bad choice. And I'm just going to head right back. Head right back. What else can I do? There was a last spot of DD in at A, most likely not there. There's multiple enemy ships going on the outside of the A point as I speak. Definitely spotted, so I definitely know that that enemy gearing that was north of A point and the, the most further along enemy ship, he's got to be pushed up a significant amount to the point where I'm detected. Yeah, he's even firing over the island because he's so confident that he's not going to be spotted. There's nothing else in the area. Everything's good. Yeah, everything's good for you, but it's not good for me. And yep, sure enough, the enemy is pushing fast, trying to get a little bit of chip damage on the enemy. The Z-52 was successful in capturing C point, and it does look like the enemy has sort of broken off and done two different things. Enemy Zhao, instead of continuing the A flank, he decided to pull back, maybe pincer the Z-52. Notice the smoke. That means that there is an enemy gearing, because there's only gearings on this flank, who is fairly close. And of course, the other gearing sent all his torpedoes, and I find myself in a position where I'm trying to avoid torpedoes. I'm going to try and assist in taking out a target, but I can't really do it that well. And man, I was so fortunate there. Notice, didn't cause a flood, so I don't have to repair that. But I'm, I'm in full retreat. There's absolutely gearing, openly firing in that smoke. He has not sent his torpedoes towards me yet, so we know that there are torpedoes coming in. Here they come. And thankfully, I was able to speed myself out of that predicament. But I am under a huge amount of damage. And instead of engaging Yamato or the other gearings, I'm going to try and invest in something that could potentially help my team. I'm going to invest in killing that Zhao. If we take the Zhao out, he's the last cruiser. So I get a little bit more damage. While taking a ton of damage. I mean, constant barrage. Constantly on fire. I'm definitely not getting out. I just want to try and get a ship taken out before the enemy. And notice that Zhao. He tried to converge with the friendly Z-52 that is capturing C-Point. How do I know that? Someone's capturing C-Point. The only person that isn't spotted is the Z-52. I know, verify that the gearing had that smoke, just because it's the gearing. It only can be the gearing. But we get a little bit more damage on the Zao. And honestly, considering the situation, I think I did pretty good, because our friendlies were able to take that Zao out with the effort that I put in. I think that's so important. Focus your fire. 
way too many games nobody is focusing. They're going after everything except the same target. And that doesn't help anyone. That's the last thing that you would want. The friendly Zhao pushing forward. The Z-52, who is trying to pincer with his friendly Zhao, finds himself in a very similar situation, in reverse. Now, this Z-52 probably felt like this was the right play. It's going to work out. I don't know why the friendly Zhao sent torpedoes. There's no way he would ever hit those torpedoes. Literally no way to ever hit them against this enemy DD. It's just a waste of time. But it didn't, didn't hurt him because his reload wasn't, you know, it didn't go over the reload. He didn't position himself weirdly. It was, it was okay. But that Z-52 in his effort to close up that gap and really seal the deal, same with Zhao, they ended up costing their lives. And now that huge advantage that the enemy team had they don't have it anymore. And the only reason that occurred is they separated. If you have an advantage of two bases to one, do you know what the best thing you can do? Meet up with your team and just use that overwhelming ship firepower and work through the enemy. Don't deliberately separate yourself. That's just not going to work out. And this Montana's in trouble. He's dealing with Yamato, who can overmatch his front bow, so his angling is not very useful at all there is a gearing that is converging from his port side there's also a gearing openly firing which i don't understand at all because he's openly firing he's giving a shot to the montana who clearly can hit this is ranked you can't openly fire dds even if you have high gun velocity and you're firing at 13 and 14 kilometers those shots are going to be hit every single time. And the gearing realizes, wait a minute, I've got to not fire. And he holds his fire, which is great. Enemy Yamato is trying to go for the bow and overmatch. And I suggested to the Montana, ram the Yamato, kill the gearing. Well, he can't ram the Yamato because he hasn't killed the gearing. So he's in a very weird position. Oh my god, the gearing got too close. Why is the gearing this close? to have perfect torpedoes. He hits one, two, he hits two, but he was visible. Why? Why would you show yourself in that situation? It does no good. I recognize that he was probably moving forward to get the perfect torpedo attack, but there's literally a friendly Yamato who is right there. You don't need to kill him with your torpedoes. You just have to get some damage. Instead, he got too close. The Montana moved out a little bit, angling just appropriately to detect him. He could easily finish him off. And he did. This other gearing correctly predicted that A point was open and he needed to go protect it. Unfortunately, he did not consider who his opponent could be. Because a Z-52 is the direct counter in a close situation to the gearing. He can pop his smoke, he can pop hydroacoustic, he can be protected from both torpedoes and also automatically detect you. There's literally nothing he could do. And he would have known this if he would have considered that his opponent was a Z-52. It's not like it's a choice, defensive AA or hydroacoustic. No, 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 it's always going to be on the Z-52. And this game is just a perfect example. Kaba detonates. I get basically overrun by a poor decision to sail over into the enemy. Multiple friendlies just get overwhelmed and wiped out at A. And then the enemy team does all of their throwing. They get pincered because they tried to pincer at C point. Then the friendly gearing shows himself by getting too close to the Montana and allows the only out that the Montana has to work. And then the final gearing predicts correctly that a point is open but he doesn't even consider oh wait this guy will probably have hydroacoustic because he's german yeah that's a pretty big oops and it's just the icing on the cake of futility when you play rank you've got to recognize no matter how good i am it still is a team game and your team the enemy team 
will do everything in their power to lose the game. And what you need to make sure is try and communicate your intentions more to your team. And if you see a teammate who is doing something, instead of telling them they're stupid or they're wrong, suggest to them a better strategy. And usually that player will go along with it if it's sound. Like that pincer by the friendly Zhao in the Z52, perfect. That was absolutely perfect. And the enemy team was trying to do it to our Z52. I thought that was a great play. I was very happy with the Montana. It seemed like the Montana had the same idea in his head. And by just saying it as someone who's dead, I think that was a healthy thing to have that conversation in that moment. He could recognize, okay, the gearing is absolutely the most important thing. And it was, and he got it. He died, but that's okay. He got the most important thing there, which is the gearing. I hope that this was educational. I'm sorry if this made you just angry at the screen. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time.